Well, hi everyone. I think I've got an interesting video for you today. This is one of the bridge projects I'm involved with. It's part of the Improve I-70 project to widen and add additional travel lane in each direction along I-70 between Kansas City and St. Louis, Missouri, a much needed project. This will involve the replacement of dozens of bridges along this 250 mile route, $2.8 billion project. This is the location of this particular bridge project, I-70 and Truman Road near downtown Kansas City. Just kind of zoom out here to show you the overall location of this project. What's interesting about this project is it involves four foot diameter pipe pile, seven eighths inch wall thickness in the upper section and three quarter inch wall thickness in the lower section. These pile were originally configured to be closed ended with a cruciform driving tip. You could see that the uh, large diameter pipe piles at the intermediate bents, bents two and three, have a required capacity of 1,725 kips. A kip is 1,000 pounds. The plan length of these piles on the intermediate bents is around 110 feet. The upper sections are galvanized for corrosion protection. Just a detail of the cruciform pile point. So you have a two and a half inch thick flat closure plate, and then you have these other plates arranged in a triangular fashion. And of course you need a very large pile driving hammer to install piling of this size. This is a Delmag D100 hammer. See it, uh, the red hammer and the yellow leads to hold the hammer in place while it's piles being driven. So the pile hammer is a single acting diesel engine, if you will. So the cylinder is open at the top end to the atmosphere. And this ram weighs 20,000 pounds and it has a max stroke of around 12 feet, so the theoretical maximum energy that could be delivered to the pile upon impact is over 275,000 foot-pounds. And with a typical diesel hammer, the energy transfer is about 50% of the potential energy because you have energy losses through friction of the piston with the housing and, and other losses. Just an overall view of the project site, they're building the new bridge, to the inside of the existing eastbound and westbound lanes because obviously cutting off traffic to interstate highway system would be uh, problematic at best. Just another view of the project site. So it's atypical to have this large of pile driven in the Kansas City area, but we're seeing more and more use of these large diameter pipe piles on these types of projects. And here's the arrangement of our strain gauges and accelerometers. For large diameter pipe pile because of bending and for the potential of the pile hammer to impact the top of the pile in a differential fashion, you'll want to use four sets of strain gauges and we use at least a, a set of two accelerometers. That way you can capture whether there's greater loading on one side of the pile versus another side and average it out. Otherwise you could be essentially over predicting or under predicting the capacity of the pile. And this is what our data acquisition system looks like. Top part of the screen is the strain gauges and the bottom part is accelerometers. We had an issue with the nick in the shielding for one of the lead wires. You could see this high peak towards the end of the record. We ended up swapping out a gauge to eliminate that issue. Just another view of the pile driving. So they drilled borings to a depth of 150 feet and still didn't encounter a rock at this location, which is atypical for the Kansas City area. Although there are locations throughout the area where rock is very deep, well in excess of 150 feet. Whereas typically you're going to encounter shale or limestone bedrock in the suburbs to a depth of around 10 or 15 feet. And other areas of Kansas City typically at a depth of less than 50 feet. So let's go through the soil profile here. So the upper portion of the soil profile consists of alternating layers of lean and fat clays, typical in values of around five blows per foot. And then around depth of 80 feet, we get into the uh, sand layers, which is logged as being saturated sand, coarse grained, in values in the range of 20 to 40 blows per foot. So medium dense to dense. And you can see that continues on to a maximum boring depth of around 150 feet. Still did not encounter rock, as I mentioned earlier. So for our first test pile at Bent 3, we ended up with an installed depth of 95 feet below grade. Again, our target capacity was 1,725 kips. And this is what the plots look like for the electronic data collected with the pile driving analyzer. And we achieved a capacity just over our target at 1730 kips. Half that capacity roughly was from side friction. The 
other half from in-bearing. And when I say distribution of side friction and in-bearing, you have either adhesion or friction along the side of the pile, and then you have in-bearing at the tip of the pile. And the capacity of the piling is a combination of these two contributions. Now these pile were installed in 20 foot deep three board holes and their plan was to use a vibratory hammer to install the first 50 feet of the piling. So another 30 feet or so past the pre bore hole and then they would add their splice sections and continue with the impact hammer. And they found, and I wasn't surprised by this, but they got very little penetration with the vibratory hammer past the pre bore depth with the closed ended pipe pile just a matter of a couple of feet. So subsequently they decided to cut the end of the pipe pile off and drive them as open-ended. That way they could vibro it down to a depth of at least 50 feet and have better control of the verticality of the piling. But of course when they did that they lost a lot of capacity. So we ended up going well past the planned depth for the piling. Instead of a 100 foot long pile they ended up with an installed depth of 140 feet to get the required capacity of 1725 kips. That's what this plot looked like. Now, interestingly, you can see when they began the redrive after adding a splice, they had a lot of setup. So that was noteworthy. And as they started driving, they lost a lot of that capacity and had to continue on to a depth of 140 feet till they met required capacity again. And again, about half the capacity comes from side friction, the other half from end bearing, although our end bearing is considerably less than what it was with the closed ended condition of the pile. Setup effects are time dependent capacity increases that occur due to dissipation of excess pore water pressures that are generated during driving. So if you will, drainage of water around the soil particles so that the soils have more friction or adhere more strongly to the side of the pile depending on the type of material whether it's a clay or a sand. So for the next pile that was driven open-ended they had a capacity of less than 1200 kips at end of drive and what I realized is if they test all three pile on the bent they could use a higher resistance factor which would require a lower capacity for the piling and so that's what they did they stopped this piling had around 1200 kips capacity and at about a 21 hour restrike they got over 1600 kips and with the higher 0.75 fee factor they could lower their target capacity to 1495 kips so that was the suggestion i made that saved them a lot on on piling they would have had to drive probably another 30 to 40 feet had they not utilized the restrike and the higher resistance factor and using the higher resistance factor, or what they call a fee factor, comes out of design guidance from the American Association of State Highway Transportation Officials, essentially what becomes the specification used for design of bridge projects. So the more rigorous the pile verification, the higher fee factor you can use, and that results in a lower required capacity overall. So that was a very successful project. I think that just shows the value of having a testing consultant that truly acts as a consultant rather than just merely run the test and say here's your result. So I was providing guidance on using restrike testing that wasn't part of the specifications for the project. I also suggested testing all piling on the bent so that a higher resistance factor and lower required capacity could be utilized. Of course that had to be agreed upon by the engineer of record which they agreed and it saved them a lot of money on pile installation costs. Very interesting to work on these projects where you know a bridge will be used long after I'm gone from this earth. Uh, these projects will typically have a life of around 75 years. So with that, I wanna send a shout out to those of you who've contributed to buy me a coffee. That's one of the better ways to support this channel. I also wanna thank the channel members who typically get to preview these videos a few days in advance of them going public. And I also wanna thank those of you who've contributed to Super Thanks and provide comments to these videos. So stay tuned, I've got more interesting topics coming up.